bro. Spend a little day with me, moved out edition. Yippee. Hey. So I moved out probably about two weeks ago and um, that's where I've been, if you were wondering. Also, I'm, I was sick, so if I sound congested and if you see all the aquaphor around my dry, peeling nose, that's, that's why. Like, I, I've left my contagious arc. I'm not, I'm not going, go ahead. Why are you honking? I wasn't going. I'm like really wondering when moving out is gonna stop feeling like I'm on a trip. Where I am living, I've been to on trips, so I'm just like, oh, I'm on vacation. We're two weeks in and I'm still like, oh, I'm going home soon. Like, girl, no, you live here. I don't know why I still feel like I'm on vacation because I packed up all my things and all my belongings are in my apartment, but still in my brain, like I can't conceptualize it yet. Packing up my room was like the weirdest thing ever. Seeing it so empty was so weird. I did do a room tour before I packed it all up, so. Get, get on the YouTube channel. Anyone's like moved out of the state that they were born and raised in, let me know if you ever like stop feeling like you're on a little trip because I'm I'm just on vacation, babes. You know what I think it is? I think it's because I don't have a job. Like I think it's because I'm a jobless loser. Well, yes, uh, but then I went to Walgreens and I picked up some photos I had printed to put in some picture frames at my apartment. Hey I'm good, how are you? Right. Okay, so I just picked up my little photo print photo prints at Walgreens <laughs> and I'm gonna put them in my frames because I've had these frames sitting here with no pictures in it and it's making me feel like a store so I need to like start putting the hell what the frame was like hard to open but I figured it out because I'm so smart oh, cute. Aww. and this is me showing you how cute it looks on my little shelf Aww. okay this one I have to cut or fold will it go on like that oh Wow. I'm not sure why I'm so excited in this next clip. It's not like I did anything that hard. Anyway, then I got Chipotle. <laughs> because I saw Sloth Girl or Gabby or uh, Whip it, Big Girl eating it the other day. And then it looked really good. And, you know, that was like seeing her eat it was enough influence for me to eat it. Because it's so funny. Like, I just want to enjoy food as much as she does. Gabby, if you're watching this, my girlfriend and I are your biggest fans. And then my chip broke like four different times, which is honestly really effed up. And I don't know why it would do that to someone as sweet and kind and wonderful as me. Um, and I'm just going to keep talking until I'm done eating because something about watching me eat in silence is really awkward. Okay. And then I edited my YouTube video on the couch because no outside clothes on the bed. And I picked Taylor from work and we went to the grocery store and then I went home and that was my day. Bye. Why does getting a straw at Starbucks feel like such a moral dilemma every time? Because sometimes I feel wrong for asking for one, and then other times I feel wrong for not asking for one. Like the other day, I went through the drive through and I pull up to the window, and usually they ask me if I want a straw, and I'm like, oh no, I'm good. Um, and then I said that to this woman this particular time, and she like looked at me funny, and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, and then she leans over and she's like, if you're worried about killing the turtles, they're biodegradable. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm actually just a sipper. I told her that I was a sipper. And then I did like a little like, I'm a sipper motion with my hand. So I think now I just have to kill my, what the hell is a sipper? I couldn't tell you, but that's what I am to this woman at Starbucks. So I, um, I hate, I hate drive throughs Now I just accept the straw. Someone please help me. So I bought this top from Urban like months ago and I've never worn it. I was wearing it my last TikTok and in my TikTok I had it on like this, which looked fine for the TikTok, but let me show you what the back looks like. <laughs> That's because it's not supposed to be worn like this. Hold on, I'll show you what it's, I'll show you what it, it was modeled to look like. So it's supposed to be like a, a sweater that kind of, sits up over your top but i just feel like it looks so stupid and i've had it for months and i have absolutely no idea what to do with it and it looked cute on the model which i guess is like always awesome it was cute on the model which i guess is always the case but i just don't think even if this part had a little more fabric i just i don't understand what you're supposed to do with it and once again this is probably not the top to wear with it anyway but like It's not, it's not giving. It's not giving. Someone help. Trying in and out for the first time while I tell you how I got doxxed when I was 13 on a Minecraft server and then my address got leaked all over the internet. 
We got the animal style fries. And a grilled cheese animal style. It's absurd about it. I used to be on a YouTube channel called Seven Supergirls, and so I had like an internet presence before I should have. And when I was 13, I used to do this really stupid thing where I had a Minecraft server, I posted the IP address for on like all my social media, and then anyone who like watched my videos could come on. So I met this girl doing this, and her name was Candy, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna just call her that for the sake of the video. That's not her real name. So Candy and I started talking, we became like pretty good friends, and then Candy introduced me to her other two friends, who for the sake of the video we're gonna call Mandy and Andy. Just giving JoJo see what baby names. So we all met through this stupid Minecraft server, we would play Minecraft together, and we would like Skype, because that's like the form of communication of this time. Keep a long story short, at some point, I upset Candy. I don't honestly even remember at all what it was. We were in some serious 13 year old beef. I probably like talked about her behind her back or something because she did something that made me mad on the Minecraft server. I don't even remember. So she probably had a right to be mad at me. However, at <laughs> this point I had this friend group that we all played Minecraft together. Uh, not associated with Candy, Mandy, and Andy, but they also became friends with them. Does that make sense? My other friend group and I had come up with this stupid idea to make a Minecraft live stream. For some reason, we called it the Five Fab Felicias. So one night in the middle of our Candy Mandy and Andy super mega beef, we're doing this live stream and all of a sudden weird stuff starts popping up in the live chat. This is why your parents tell you to never give any of your information to strangers on the internet because I'm pretty sure that Candy Mandy and Andy knew like my last name in the state I lived in. Okay, that was too much. Because I'm minding my business doing my stupid little live stream. And there's like, a, there's like some people on it, you know. All of a sudden I see in the chat, Wilkins which is my last name. Keep in mind, my last name was not public information at this point. Like no one on the internet knew my last name. So I start freaking out and all my friends start like private messaging me being like, oh my God, why is your last name in the chat? Like, who is that? I'm having a panic attack at this point. And then I thought that was it, right? I thought they just had my last name. Boom, my address. But it wasn't like my whole address at first. They would just say like little parts of it. For the sake of the video, let's pretend I lived on one, two, three, tree lane. First it was just like one, two, three. And then it was like one, two, three, tree. And then it was like one, two, three, tree. Like they just like kept slowly, gradually dropping my little info. And at this point, like everyone in the chat <laughs> started catching on. They were like, what is this? Cause I had gone completely mute at this point. Like I was silenced. You could have heard a pin drop. Like it was crickets because we were all freaking out. Anyway, so at this point, everyone's figured out it's my address, and I don't remember how we figured out that it was Candy, Mandy, and Andy, but somehow we did. And my address got posted online on a, um, a Wattpad thing where they listed all of the seven Supergirls address addresses. And it was there, and then people came to my house and sent things. I don't have any grudge on any of these people. We all were like stupid kids, and it's I've spoken to Mandy in the story since then, and we've laughed about it. Hope you guys are all doing well. I no longer live there, so. <sighs> Thank you for your time. Things I have eaten and survived that are not supposed to go in your body. Coming in hot at number one, soap. I made a video of myself as a child eating soap and instead of just using candy or something that looked like soap, I committed to the bit and ate real soap. Then they made me make a video to say that I did not actually eat soap and not to try it at home because apparently kids were trying to eat soap, but I would like to clarify that I did actually eat soap and then I had a major reaction to it and I couldn't eat for like two weeks because my mouth was like swollen and on fire. Number two, Lush Chocolate Lip Scrub. I used to devour this. Like I would put my finger in there and eat the entire tub in like one sitting. I know it's edible, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to eat it like that. Three, candle. I don't know how to explain that one. Four, my hair. I used to go to town on my hair as a child. I used to like, just, anytime I'm stressed. I, I, that's probably like a disorder. I don't know. 
Five, styrofoam from a styrofoam cup. Why would you put my drink in it if you didn't want me to chew it? Chapstick, specifically the Chapstick Classic Original flavor. I would roll it up and just take a bite out of it. Why would you make it that texture if you didn't want me to? And last but certainly not least, and I think a bit of a universal experience, Polly Pocket clothes, specifically that purple jacket. Ah! Oh! In my mouth. Now. Yum. Try crumble cookies. <laughs> Here's the lineup. Uh -huh. One of these is literally a cheesecake. It's not even a cookie. We'll do that one last. That one is better than the chocolate one they had last week. Four out of five. I'm in poppy seed, I think. That's what it's called. It's very... S <laughs> it's very subtle lemon. Like, you only taste the lemon at the start. Two out of five. That one's okay. Mom's recipe. Recipe, recipe, recipe. <laughs> Contaminating the cookie. I don't know where this thing has been. waiting for like something to actually be five out of five you know like i don't give that lightly that one's nice that's the crunchiest one every time i get these they're not as crunchy and i see other people get them and they're like super crunchy maybe it's because they're in my like a hot melting car pink velvet cake oh, that smells like sugar what is pink velvet That one's a three. Three out of five. Okay, how am I gonna eat this? <laughs> Is it like greedy to take a bite out of it? Like, like just a straight up bite? Should I do it? Just just hear me out, just hear me out. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a bite. I'm not gonna get any of the whipped cream because I it's it like went over to that side. Mmm. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. <laughs> Four and a half out of five. Four and a half out of five. I don't know what would make it a five. That's my review. Signing off. Sorry if you can hear the ASMR rain sounds in the background. I'm sitting in my car in the rain because um, while I'm actually waiting to go in somewhere, it's just I'm an hour early. I've realized something about myself lately because I started going to therapy, which is a really big step for me because I love to like not actually address the fact that I have a lot going on up there uh but the problem is i've realized that either i just love to talk about myself or i'm just the best person to ever have in therapy because i feel like people are apprehensive to talk about their problems in therapy like i feel like at least from what i've heard it's it's hard to you know talk about your issues and, and unpack your your problem like sometimes she'll ask me a question and she'll be like we don't have to get into it you don't have to answer it if you're not comfortable because like who wants to talk about their problems and tell somebody they don't even know about them me that too first session i was just like getting into my lore i was like this happened this happened this happened this happened no issue it's like a little story time but like where i get medical assistance for my story time so it's like what i'm doing right now but with a medical profession help me get a good driver's license photo i just moved so i have to get my driver's license switched over to the state that i just moved in my driver's license photo on my other license was ah! It's not gonna look like this, but I can try my best to make it another another serve. And that's what you're gonna help me do today, so get ready with me. I'm on my living room floor. This is about to be the most serious makeup I ever do in my life. I know there's like that um, tutorial, it's like best driver's license, passport, makeup tutorial. And you know, I would follow that, but that's, I don't have that much time to be watching the video. I think the uh, ticket to a good driver's license photo is you just have to go in there serving massive amounts of uh, see you next Tuesday. And you have to just believe that you're gonna serve it because if you believe it, you can achieve it. Also, I have a, I got a shiner on my on my eyebrow. I got a, I got a little mountain growing up there in my brow, but hopefully it'll hide because it's inside of my eyebrow. I'm sorry about the Southern accent, y'all. I'm not really sure where that came from. I didn't even know for sure if I was getting my license today because, long story short, my car is registered 
not in my name currently it's in my dad's name like a whole fiasco to like get it all figured out and so i didn't know if i was supposed to get my license changed over yet but i am so hope that helps why can't they just keep your license fogo like i don't look different although one time i was going through security at an airport and granted i had been crying so this is probably why but the the um tsa agent that like takes your id when you first walk up to security looked at the picture and looked back at me and goes I know this is you, but it really doesn't look like you and you should get a new picture. I was like, uh, usually I do like a couple fake freckles, but I think I'll, well, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. What happens if I like get pulled over and they look at my DMV phone and they go, you don't have freckles. That's not you. Stupid batch. Like what if they do that? I've only been pulled over once. I'm really hoping I don't make that more than once anytime soon because I was speeding and then I did defensive driving and everything was fine, but I cried a little, but I cry over most things. I've been watching Glee and like, tell me why I was crying over like, Kurt coming out. It's <laughs> actually so much blush and I didn't really want it to be that dark, but that's okay. I'm gonna start getting told I have blush blindness. Okay, now I do the part that makes me look really scary. I use this lips. Sorry, my upstairs neighbors just like turned the bath on or something. So I'm like, someone was flooding in my apartment. It's blue. Then we have to let this dry, but while we're letting it dry, I'm gonna do my mascara. So you're just gonna have to ignore that I look like this. It's It couldn't be going worse, if I'm being honest. Instead of using a spoolie, I just like to rub it around in, with my finger. I have to get a spoolie. Hold on. I look alive! And I think the real ticket to why my other photo was like, that I had big hoops on. So we're gonna do big hoops, because I just feel like this, like, made it like more like slut already wish me luck if the photo comes out bad i'll just kill guys it's a few weeks later i fear i ate revealing five four three two one ah! who is that oh my god like wait like wait like wait uh wait, uh. i would like to thank the grammys i would like to thank my fans I would like to thank my parents for making me the hottest and sexiest person alive. If you think it's ugly, don't tell me in the comments because I am in love with myself. <laughs> I'm referring all of you to my therapist because tell me why yesterday I posted a video saying I was sad because someone's going to buy the lot next to my house so I wouldn't have <coughs> so I wouldn't have trees out my window anymore. And all the comments were suggesting ways to get rid of my new neighbors. Someone told me to go over there and plant endangered plants so they can't legally dig them up and build there. Someone told me to draw satanic symbols in the dirt so they get scared and run away. Someone told me to go over there and hide cursed dolls in the dirt and put cursed papers everywhere so the lot becomes cursed. And someone told me to bake them a welcoming cake and fill it with laxatives and roaches. And you know what? I really, I love, don't get me wrong, I love the creativity. Keep it coming. But what is wrong with you? I mean, you might be a little insane. I'm not going to jail over some trees. However, um... What, what I go to jail? I mean, I'm not doing it though. I'm normal. Stop. He wants to hear a story about how I broke my ass. Like my actual ass. Also, I know it's hard to ignore how good I look right now. I just got my hair done. So I used to water my neighbor's plants whenever she would go out of town because I was a really wonderful little neighbor and I was a great little child and I used to go over and I would dog sit for her and I would water all her plants so they didn't die. The plants and the dog. It was like a little job for the little 10 year old me. And one particular day I had gone over there and it had already been raining and you might be thinking, why were you watering the plants where it was already raining? But that's because the plants were on the porch and they weren't getting the rain. She had this porch that was made out of like the most slippery stone. I think you can see where this is going. The most slippery stone. It was beautiful, but it was very slippery. And I did not even take into account that it would be slippery because it had already been raining. So I was 10 and I didn't have any common sense. As I'm like hosing her plants on the porch, I start backing up and in the process, I slip and I fall flat on my butt right on like not even on like my butt like not even on like the cheeks which i have no ass anyway so it's bony down there but i felt like on like the tailbone like the part that connects to your spine worst pain of my life immediate wailing now that's not even the bad part of this story what's bad is what came after the injury when you bust your tailbone you cannot sit on anything nothing nothing where you are not in excruciating pain and the only way you can sit on things with a broken tailbone is with an ass donut. This thing, it inflates and you have to sit it on every seat you want to sit on. Now keep in mind, 
I was 10, so I went to school every day of my life, and I had to carry that thing into all of my classes and sit in on my little seat and sit my little butt down on it, and everyone in that class stared at me. Sorry, it's a really hard time for me. It's hard to talk about. And I was already bullied, so you can just imagine everybody in that school saw that and was like, yes, opportunity. And not only did I have to take that butt donut everywhere I went, everywhere I went, restaurants, school, Anywhere I could possibly end up, that thing came with me. I couldn't walk for the first couple weeks with the injury, so my teachers had to carry both me and my ass donut from class to class. And they had to stand it on the chair for me and set me down on the donut. And the best part about it is that wasn't the only time that I had to go through this, because I did it again a few years later when I forgot that I had a shower curtain and not a glass door on my shower and I had a little slip and slide moment. Smack. Onto the tile. Bear, bear bomb. Made a nice noise too. It was great. Don't break your butt. Stay safe, please. Bitch, who remembers the baby wipes or coconut bean boozled flavor? The baby wipes flavor went bonkers. Bonkers. First time I played it and I tasted it, I was like, the people I was playing with were like, oh, you got coconut. And I was like, no. I got the wipes. Bitch, I was munching. I was like, I would commit unspeakable crimes. I would do things you can't even imagine for a bag, one bag of the bean boozled baby wipe flavored jelly beans in my stomach. Bean boozled, please do something. <laughs>so i'm moving out in less than a month out of my parents house and out of the state that i was born and raised in um and i have so much to do and then i was thinking to myself i was like should i make like packing videos would you guys want to see like moving out content like packing videos because i feel like i would watch packing videos you guys i have so much stuff it's actually ridiculous so I'm just like, would you would you watch me like go through my stuff and put it in boxes? Cause like I've always wanted to play that game packing simulator and I feel like now I'm getting to do it in real life. But I have like, oh my God, sorry, I got a text. Anyways, sorry, I was trying to say that I have an absurd amount of stuff. Like my problem is I'm super nostalgic so I keep everything and then I don't get rid of anything. And then like, there's just like bins all in my closet of things that I don't need but still have, which I can leave some of it on my parents, but We'll see. We'll see. I just need to start going through it because I have less than a month and I have months worth of shit to go through. But I don't know. Let me know. I was going to do some like YouTube videos of it, but I kind of feel like it'd be fun to post packing TikToks as well. If you guys want to see that, um, if not, then I'll just go die then. I'll just fuck off. Just kidding. That was my uh, manipulative man cosplay. Anyway, let me know, pokies. Mwah! Sorry, was that weird? Good morning, pookie wookies. Make my matcha with me, except it's not morning, it's 1.30 p.m., so. Okay, so this is the matcha that I use. I got it off Amazon. I like it, but it literally comes with hardly any, like, I've used it three times. Like, girl. Anyway, I just do two scoops of this. Sorry, if you could see how I'm standing right now, I'm literally doing this. <laughs> I'm too tall. Um, anyway, this is like around two-ish ounces of water. I mean, three? What? I don't know what I'm saying. And now we whisk. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna grab my cup and I'm gonna go fill it with ice. That's too much. There. You guys, I think I'm gonna go get a piercing today. Um, I'm feeling a little silly and I've wanted to get a tragus piercing for like months now, so I might go do it. Anyway, I'm using my oat milk. This is the Chibani Oat Milk Extra Creamy. This is the best oat milk in my opinion. Oh
Do you ever drink an oat milk in like your latte or something and it gives you like the weird grainy feeling at the back of your throat or is that like a skill issue? It might be a skill issue. Now into the milk, I put some raspberry syrup. I usually do lavender, but I saw some girl doing raspberry and it sounded really, really yum. Okay, now we add the matcha. Are you ready? This is gonna be so aesthetic and sexy and amazing. hair on it <laughs> anyway <laughs> i've been in my at home barista era and i'm honestly really enjoying it like every morning i get up and i look forward to making my little silly little coffee or my silly little matcha and i feel better about it because one i made it myself and two i didn't spend six dollars so best day ever yum <laughs> have a great day trying crumble <laughs> i've never had crumble cookies so I am gonna do a taste test for the first time. We're gonna do the crumble of the week. This is kind of fun. Like I feel like I'm like in on a little secret club. I saw the the blonde chick from Riverdale try them, and then I was like, maybe I should. Okay, first we're gonna do blueberry muffin. Smells like a blueberry muffin. Tastes like a blueberry muffin. Okay. Four out of five. This is the one I'm most excited for. Churro. I need another bite. Hmm. It's kind of just giving cinnamon. Three out of five. Classic pink sugar. It's literally a sugar cookie. I'm expecting it to taste like a sugar cookie. It tastes like a sugar cookie. <laughs> I'll give it like a three. I'd give it higher if I was more of a sugar cookie nader. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hey. You guys want a cookie? Peanut butter munch. This has like the pi pirate's booty. What? This is called puppy chow. Ooh. It yum. That one's like even with the blueberry muffin, so four. I think I've rated the blueberry muffin four. I don't remember. Four. <laughs> and finally, triple chocolate chip. Ew. Of course. Alright, let's try it. I need like a palate cleanser. Four out of five. No five out of fives this time. This time, like, I've done this before. No five out of fives for me, but I'm picky. Not, like, a getting cookies out type of person. I prefer, like, you buy, like, store-bought cookie dough and bake it in the oven. So maybe I don't have good taste. Don't listen to me. Goodbye. Dig into this Chipotle with me while I tell you about the time that someone tried to buy my used underwear on Depop. <laughs> so I get a veggie bowl, no meat. I get a little bit of the fajita veggie, and then I get, like, all the toppings. I bought like a shit ton of clothes on Depop like an absurd amount I was like super bored and depressed in quarantine so I went on like an insane shopping spree turns out uh, that like most people everything that you know you bought in 2020 automatically is like the worst thing ever when you look at it now 2020 was a different time so Girl, I fell victim to every single micro trend. You know, those like Victoria's Secret uh, vintage bustier corset tops that everyone was like wearing on Pinterest with like jeans. Girl, I had seven of those and not one of them fit my double A cups. Oh, they all like were just like sitting in my closet rotting. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to make some of the money that I completely blew back by selling it on Depop again and someone else can love it. Anything that I didn't want to sell, I just donated, right? So I was like, okay, win win. I haven't sold anything in months, keep in mind. Like, the last thing I sold was pretty early this year. And then one day I'm just, like, sitting at dinner. Backtrack. I forgot to mention. I had listed one of those corsets, and, an, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a man tried to buy it. An old man. I said no. <laughs> anyway, one day I'm sitting at dinner, I get, like, a Depop message notification. I go, oh, that's weird. Because there's, like, 
two items left on my account. So I was like, okay, maybe they're like inquiring about one of the two items that I still have up. And so I like go to look at it and you won't believe what I saw. Are you selling any of your panties? If so, how much? At least they're like asking my selling price, you know? I was gagged. I was, I gasped. Here's a photo of me live at dinner reading the message. I was also a little, a little tipsy, a little whenever I received that message. So I thought it was real funny. Um, I did not reply in case you were wondering. And if I did reply, uh, I would have uh, said that my listing price was $300 million. Because this is a classy, this is a close to be a classy place. This is Depop, not OnlyFans. If you want to sell your underwear, I'll respect the hustle queen, but not me. Also, I wear like Amazon Basics granny panty, like hipsters. There's just nothing sexy going on in there. Surely there's a market for that and it is not on the app where Y2K fashion girlies sell their Pinterest inspired clothes for extortionate prices. Maybe that's not the site, you know? Good luck next time. Thank you for your time. Does anybody ever think about how weird it is that like when you're driving down the freeway and there's a bunch of cars around you that every single one of those cars has another person in it who has their own like complex life because i feel like that's so crazy and i don't know why dude why are there ants in my car the other day i was driving and there was an ant that like crawled on my leg and now there's an ant in here okay i don't know what's going on that's where are they coming from that's a little bit weird um what was i saying something oh how weird it is that people are in cars <laughs> anyway it's like i know they're in there but it's weird to think how many people are in the world and have their own lives and their own people that they know that you'll just never know and that you'll never understand and like you might never meet any of those people or you might meet one of them one day and they might become somebody you know it's just weird sorry Hey guys, spend another day with me, except I am an idiot, and I placed an order for crumble cookies because I wanted to do a video trying them, and I accidentally placed the order for pickup for 2 o'clock, and it's 1.55, and I live 30 minutes from the crumble, so now I get to go drive there and speed. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to speed. I just got over a ticket. I don't know why I said it like that. It sounds like I just got over a cold. Oh, it's so hot and like humid and disgusting. Every time summer comes around, I'm like, yay! And then the second it's hot, I'm like, Fuck. you know, just like that. Every time I back out of my driveway, I like to play a little game I like to call, how far can I back up without hitting the garage behind me? Because I have to park weird. Like my driveway is goes inward and then the bottom of the driveway. It's like, it's like slim thick. In order for my mom to be able to get out of the garage, I have to like pull basically into the grass. So I have to back up in order to not drive through the grass and break all the sprinklers. Other news, I've been trying to be good because I went to the doctor for the first time in 10 years. I'm not kidding. And, um, oh, okay. Thank you. I'm not sure why he's letting me go, but I'm apparently deficient in vitamin D. I've been trying to take my vitamin D every day. And you guys, I swear, ever since I started the vitamin D supplement, I literally can't sleep. Like, I've been up at, until 3 or 4 a.m. every single night since I started taking it. So today I'm not taking it, and I'm going to see if I can sleep because I literally can't think of what else would be causing it. I was sleeping just fine before. Maybe it's because it's like, you know, vitamin D is from the sun, and the sun gives you, is like energy morning. I take the vitamin D in the morning, so I, well... I'm not sure what I'll do if that is what's causing it because I am deficient, but that's a problem for me later. Also, I've been drinking my electrolytes every day, which I have a hard time doing because I'm not a flavored water person. I have something called POTS, in fact, and so basically, I, my, just Google it. It's like, my, my autonomic nervous system is fucked up. Every time I stand up, my heart rate goes to like 150 and I die. Um, not literally. Sodium and electrolytes are supposed to help symptoms. I've had this since I was 10. This isn't news. But I just like have such a hard time drinking electrolytes. 
I'm not even like a dehydrated person. I'm literally, this is just me yapping. Like this isn't even a spend the day with me. I'm, I'm just talking at this point. I'm gonna shut up and drive. Shut up and drive, drive. Shut up and drive. Wired. Wow. I'm gonna do a video trying these, but in the meantime, I'm gonna strap them in because for some reason things love to slide around in my car. So let's get those secured. Not going anywhere. Low key, I want a poke bowl, but it's like 20 extra minutes away. Should I go drive it? I'll go drive it. It's so hot. I'm sweating! Hello. I had a pickup order with the one. Thank you. Let's do an unboxing. Oh! Wait! Ah! This looks so yum. Mm. Sitting here eating and someone just pulled their car up next to me, which I'm not a fan of. Why is there a man next to my car? Why are you as a man? next to my car i'm home hey queen i always get comments that are like is abby still alive well yes see i'm old as hell though did that offend you abby you're glowing i'm having the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to someone happen to me i have a gnat infestation in my plants so last or yesterday morning i got these like mosquito bit things that you dissolve in water and you pour the water on your plants and now they're all in my bathtub and you can see all the little like dead gnat bodies all over my tub because I didn't want them all over my room. I'm hoping that this gets rid of them because I've had these fuckers for months, months, and I've been losing my mind. And I have like sticky traps that catches them. Look, there's one. That's kind of sad. Like, why do I kind of have empathy? Oh my God, I can see them crawling around in there. Bro. Driving me nuts, nuts. Free me. Also, I have a hair appointment tomorrow. I think it'll be the day that you're seeing this video. And I think I'm gonna go darker. I'm moving and I don't wanna have to spend money on my hair. Like right now it's like this and I kind of just want it to be all one cohesive dark brown color so I don't have to do maintenance on it when I move. And right now it's honestly three different colors because we had bleached this part and then when I'm in the sun, you can see the red and then this is all my roots, like my natural color. So I'll see it nonetheless, so. Anyway, see you next time. Bye. <laughs> when I was 11 years old, I was catfished by a 30-year-old woman on the internet who was pretending to be a 7-year-old who was dying of cancer. I wish I was making this up. I used to Skype with a lot of the friends I made on YouTube and on the internet, and one of them was my really good friend at the time, Stephanie. I don't remember exactly how Stephanie met this girl, but it was through some Facebook groups. She used to reach out to families with kids in the hospital and like give them gifts, and I met her through Stephanie. Something like that. So I'm going to tell you this story as if you don't know where it's going, so I'm just going to tell you it from how I saw it. So as far as we knew, we were speaking to a little girl named Kyrie who was from Ireland who was sick in the hospital with cancer. And when she would talk to us on Skype, she sounded like a child. Her voice sounded like she was seven. She would Skype us from the hospital and she would update us all the time. We would get daily messages on updates on her treatment. She would tell us when she was going in for chemotherapy, when she was going in for radiation, all this stuff. And she also had her mom who would come on Skype and talk to us as well. And nothing really looked shady. Like, she had a Facebook page, there was a donation page, every single family member that she mentioned had a Facebook page, mom, dad, grandma, sister, like, everyone was accounted for, you know? There was only really one big red flag, and that was that she would never turn her camera on. She never went on video. And we did think it was weird, but then again, we were like children, so it wasn't as big of a deal as it would be to me now. There were instances that we asked why she never went on camera, and her mom, quote unquote, would tell us it's because she was in radiation or sick. Like, there was always a little excuse, and we felt weird questioning it. This escalated to the point that we were sending her gifts and money. We would mail her, like, care packages of toys and blankets and things a seven-year-old would like. Sometimes we would get really scary messages that would make us all cry and panic from her mom on Skype that would tell us that she's not doing well and they don't know if she's going to make it. This went on for probably two years, right? And then one day, I don't remember what happened, but my friend Stephanie and I were looking at a photo of Kyrie in the hospital. And I don't know what compelled us to do this, but... One of us was like, zoom in on her bracelet, her, her hospital bracelet. And when we looked at the bracelet, the bracelet did not say Kyrie. The bracelet said Megan. And we were like, that's a little strange. So we searched the name that we saw on the bracelet on Facebook. And this is when all the pieces start to fall together. Because we find a real little girl named Megan who has cancer, who has a whole Facebook page. And then it hits us. 
Whoever we have been speaking to has been putting on a fake persona under the name of Kyrie and using this little girl's photos and speaking to us in a baby voice. At this point, we had no idea if it was a child or an adult or like what was going on. We messaged the mom of the real little girl and she starts freaking out. She confirms that it was not her. It was not her daughter. No one in their family was involved in this. And then she's the one that actually figured out who was behind it. And it was the babysitter. A 30 year old woman had been putting on a baby voice, coming on a call with a bunch of kids and pretending to be a sick little girl to get gifts and money. This was the girl's babysitter. Like she had unlimited access to photos of the little girl, photos of the family, things to make it seem more legit. But none of what she was doing, none of the money and the gifts she got actually went to the little girl. So where did they go? And like how sick of an individual do you have to be in the brain to like do that? What's wrong with you, love? Something, that's for sure. And if it couldn't possibly get worse, her name was Karen. Spend the day with me. I'm gonna go get coffee. It is already one o'clock, so I filmed all morning, so I was being productive, okay? I don't wanna hear any yapping. I've been making my coffee at home, but I kinda wanna go get myself a little treat. The vibes are I want something that I don't have the facilities for to make at my house right now. So, let don't look, I didn't shave. I'm honestly a little scared to be driving today. Um, I'm stopped by the way. So the other day I was driving and a huge like spider, I'm not even kidding, this big. Okay, that was, it was like this, this big. Without legs, okay, without legs, that's an important factor. It started like coming down from the top of my window on a little web and then it landed on my leg and then I was driving and I was oh my God, this is how I die. Guys, I made it to the coffee shop but I literally can't go in because I just parked so bad that I feel like I'm gonna walk in the door and everyone's gonna point at me and laugh. Like my car is literally having sex with the curb right now. In my defense, there was a car coming and I got nervous. And so I pulled in without like fully swinging out where I needed to be. So now I'm, um, me and the curb are getting out. Okay, let's go. Let's be brave. Side note, I keep my car very clean, but the other day I, like, I kept hearing something sliding under my seat and I looked and tell me why I have Snoopy meteor bites from the space center just like under my seat. Should I eat one? No. <laughs> um, can I just do an iced latte with oat milk and vanilla, please? Sorry to put Ed Sheeran on the screen because I tried to give you all my credit card number multiple times. I'm so embarrassed by the parking, you guys. Let's do a taste test. Oh, someone's getting in the car next to me, which means they can see my parking. No, you can't go in there. You gotta go in. Okay, taste test. Yum. I'm not honestly sure if they put any vanilla in there. <laughs> this coffee shop's like in a barber shop, so it's always really awkward because you're standing there waiting for your coffee and someone to your left is getting a low taper fade. Right, we're gonna try to get off the curb. <laughs> okay. Alright, no, no, why would you drive there? I'm trying to get off the curb! Okay, I made it. Some guy watched me pull out and literally stood behind me and shook his head. Like, okay, be a hater. Some of us, some of us like the curb. Be a hater, all you want. But I'm having a better day than you because I'm living with positivity. Oh, just cut me off. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm at Target now. Why is everybody and their mother in this store? in the swimsuit section because I honestly hate all my swimsuits and I'm like maybe I should get two because there's two that I kind of like I kind of fuck with these little tangerines it's kind of good getting what I'm actually here for now be smack dinner yes they're children's no I don't actually care so Oh, I guess. Okay, we got, hear me out, <laughs> tangerine top, just plain blue bottoms because they didn't have any more of the tangerine ones. Honestly, I'm kind of okay with that because I feel like the tangerine top is enough in itself. This color, look, I'm trying to wear more color. The bottoms are like short, so cute. Oh shoot, they have the security. I didn't see that. BRB, going back inside to have them remove that. Okay sorted 
All right, it's time to go home and eat my mac and cheese bites. Have a great day, everyone. Make today your big story time about when the evil old man who ran the seven supergirls channel body shamed me and called me ugly part two for context if you don't know me i was on a kid's youtube channel called seven supergirls and the man who ran the channel was a creepy old man who ended up going to prison so that's that's if that helps at all i told the story of him body shaming me in my last post so go check that out if you didn't see it now we're gonna get to the time that he called me ugly I don't exactly remember how this story starts, but all I remember is when I found out that he did this. Now, he did not do this to my face this time. The body shaming one was to my face, no shame. This one he tried to keep under wraps. I mentioned in my last video that we all solely communicated over Skype, and sometimes all the girls would just go on Skype calls together for fun. And there was a point in time where I don't know how or why, but he started joining our Skype calls that we were just having for fun, like a bunch of 13, 14, 15 year old girls. That's not weird or suspicious at all. At some point on one of these calls, we were having a conversation and me and one of the other girls on the channel who I'm not gonna name, jokingly asked him, which one of us do you think is prettier? I don't remember why. We were like 15 and he refused to answer. He said he wasn't going to answer or compare us. And we were like, okay, whatever, ha ha. I get off the call, carry on with my day, living my life. Weeks go by. I can't remember if it was the specific girl who told me or one of the other girls who overheard it. But I heard from one of the girls that after I left the call, he did answer the question. And he said he didn't want to answer it while I was on the call. But he did not think that I was nearly as pretty as the other girl who asked him with me. What? <laughs> of course, I was like befuddled. Not that I cared if he thought I was pretty or not, but what the f***? Why are you saying that about teenage- I know we asked him, but like- why would you answer? Like, why would you wait until I left the call and answer? Like, you're weird. So I told my mom about this and then she confronted him. One thing about him is when he got nervous, he would stutter a lot, which is a common thing when people get nervous. I remember listening into the specific call that she had with him and he was stuttering like he was trying to win a stuttering contest. He was stressed. He was trying to explain himself, but there was literally no way to explain himself because someone had proof of him saying it. This old British man is like, well, I didn't mean it like that. Like, I didn't mean it like that. Like, and what did you mean? What did you mean? I'm glad he thought I was ugly. I thought he was ugly, so the feeling's mutual, buddy. Eat shit. Reading your insane confessions that are so messy and disgusting that I feel like I need to take a shower after making this TikTok. And no, this microphone is not plugged in. Hope this helps. My most insane confession is I had a bit too much to drink on my 22nd birthday and instead of puking all night, it came out the other end. Somewhere in between the night and morning, a skid mark ended up on my boyfriend's sheets and I blamed it on the dog. I went as far as making him give her a bath because she had poop butt. Girl, I probably would have done the same shit. Next. Oh my God. When I was 10, I used to send feet pictures to Dan Schneider's email and I would take dumps on the couch and perp- Sorry, I would take dumps on the- Oh my god, I, I did not read all of these in full, I just like read the first sentence. And I would take dumps on the couch and purposely step on it and I would send the pictures to Dan. That can't be real. That cannot- that cannot- that can't be real. That can't be real. I hope you're okay. I don't even like know how to move on from that. Are you okay actually? Like sincerely, honestly, are you okay? Oh my god. God. Back in 2017 or 2018, I found Dixie D'Amelio's Instagram before she was famous, and I catfished men in my hometown with her pictures on Tinder. I deleted the account in 2019 when she started blowing up. Real confession. I catfished my English teacher's husband and got him to send me pics. Later that year, we found out that they were getting a divorce. Not the home wrecker. One time a boy fucked me over so bad, I'm in a happy gay relationship now. Good for you. I filled up a McDonald's cup full of dirty um b-o-n-g water i don't know if i can say that and poured it on his freshly waxed white car once i ended up reading some 50 shades ao3 level smut about myself because the person i was in a not relationship relationship with at the time had had a theme <laughs> about me and for whatever reason their instinct was to write it down in prose form in their notes app metaphors and all instead of keeping it to themselves context their parents are pretty well-known celebrities in the uk making them both an actual minor celebrity as well as just completely worshipped is what that means at our school slash their workplace it's both hilarious and excruciating that i can't tell anybody how shambolic this kid actually is and the fact that they dropped me two months later 
You're better than me. I'd probably tell someone. <laughs> I had a really toxic long distance ex that I dated for almost a year. And right before our one year together, they decided to ghost me and block me completely after telling me they wanted to work things out and that they loved me. Classic. I was so hurt by this and it took me months to recover. After three months of no contact, they started talking to me again out of nowhere. And I'm not a revenge kind of person, but I was so petty at the time that I turned them into my own personal sugar daddy. I collected at least $500 from this person just by making them feel guilty for what they done. Never again, sis. I feel like this is testing my morality. Like, <laughs> Sorry, you what? Closed. Closed. Hey, come with me to see how much money I can make trying to sell a ton of my clothes at Plato's Closet. So this is all I'm taking today. I still have four more bags. All of this right here is still my clothes. I figured even though I hear Plato's Closet doesn't really give you much for anything, like $50 is better than zero. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to be positive. What if I get like $2,000 for all this stuff? I won't, but like, plus I got the vintage Y2K rare Brandy Melville. Who remembers this shirt? Maybe they'll take my stuff because I look cute today. Here's a clip of Play-Dohs. I don't really know what to say about that. Luckily, my mom came to help me get the giant bin out of the car and get everything transferred over to the two small bins they gave us and somehow made it all fit. Oh, that's her sitting on it to make it fit better. <laughs> Ended up having to go twice because I had too much stuff. I had like eight trash bags full. So on round one, which is what you guys saw, I made $248.50. And then on round two, which I just got back from, I made $244.16 leaving me with a total of $492.66. Bitch. Ah! I went into this with like the worst expectations ever. Girl, I'm rich. Who wants to rob me? Who wants to rob me? They better have taken my stuff. I had some nice ass stuff in there. I have stuff in there that I never even wore. Like half of it had the tags. When your wallet's too thick that it won't button shut. Thanks, Play-Dohs. That'll probably never happen to me again, so. Okay, I'm in my craft girl pottery um, initiation, hot, sexy, good with my hands, uh, air dry clay era. So I've been trying to make things out of air dry clay. And by been trying, I mean I did it last night and I'm getting impatient waiting them to, on them to dry. And it's also all over my desk and it probably ruined it. So um, the first thing I tried to make was this little shelf for on the wall, which granted these need painted. So don't look too close. Like they're ugly right now. Trust. It'll be cute. Um, it's like this. And then I thought I could do like a little. Aww. Aww. <laughs> uh, so that was the first one. I feel like it's going to break in half because this is so thin and the shelf is so thick, but that's none of my business. Oh, I think it did just break. Whatever. Then I made this that I was also going to hang on the wall using like a 3M sticky thing. And I was going to paint like a cute little like bug on it. And then I'm moving into an apartment soon and I wanted to have little magnets for my fridge. So I, <laughs> I did these, which I was going to like paint them obviously. And this one was going to be a moon, but honestly, it just looks like a... It just looks like a jumbo fingernail clipping. So if anyone has any tips, let me know. Also, how do I paint these? Like, do I use acrylic paint? What do I do? It's a work in progress. Hmm. I am not Poopinia Stewart. That is not me. I did not cry over a minion. I am not Poopinia Stewart. I'm not, no, wrong white girl, wrong bitch. I'm the seven super girls. Normalize having an ego because I just opened Snapchat to film the video to save my memories of me talking to myself because I do that all the time. And this is what happened because I saw myself. I think that we should have egos because it scares men away. Um, aw, I look so cute. Aw, I'm so cute. That wasn't cute. Aw, wait. Wait, aw, I'm so cute. <laughs> Like really adorable. Like I love me. I love me. I look so cute. <laughs> Aw, wait. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Wait. I'm so. Are you fucking, bitch? You're so cute. Okay. Sorry. I'll be normal. I don't really remember what I was gonna say. I just saw myself and got a little flustered. <laughs> 
Not to sound like an old one from the South, but we are fixing to have a problem because I suspect that somebody is trying to buy the lot that is next door to my home that my window overlooks. And it's a problem for a couple... Let me start from the beginning. I suspect this because I've seen a woman out there taking photos of the lot and it's the same woman and she keeps coming back. Um, and then there's also a man that has been there too. So I, I suspect that maybe their husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend and they're trying to buy this lot to build a home on said lot and this is a problem for a couple reasons not because i don't want um people to have places to live but because it's going to ruin my cottage core granola girl living in the trees tree house woodsy whimsical aesthetic it honestly just looks like a dirt lot when you look at it like that but it it's better like in person and when the sun shines in a certain way. Now the more pressing issue is not what I see out my window, it's what they see in my window. Because if they build a house here, they're going to be able to see into the windows of my room because I don't have blinds and I'm not willing to make that sacrifice and get blinds. Um, and I, I just don't think they need to see what goes on in this room. Sometimes there's things going on in here that they don't need to see. And I know that makes it sound like I'm doing something crazy like but I'm actually not doing that at all because I get no bitch. It's more like uh, at 3 a.m. I get like a burst of energy and then I film myself dancing on TikTok to audios, but I don't film it in regular speed because I can't dance. So I film it in like the three times or point three times. I can't remember which one it is. The one that makes it really slow motion. So the audio is like in extreme slow motion. So then I'm dancing in the extreme slow motion order for it to be sped up so it's funnier to me even though i never post it but it's funnier to me when i rewatch it later in my drafts that and also sometimes i walk around my room with no top on because i want to know what it would be like to be a man and not have to wear a shirt so um that and like i'm scared that if there are windows too close to mine they'll hear me full volume listening to waiting room by phoebe bridgers on a loop so i think my only option probably at this point is to move oh the sun's coming in look see oh my god uh, see you get it i have to move one thing about me is i am very easily ticked off and each minor inconvenience that happens to me makes me start my descent into insanity and if you want to know what caused that to happen today then i'm about to tell you but first i'm going to show you this clip for dramatic effect <laughs> So to keep a long story long, I tried to install a 5G internet because I make content for a living, obviously. In order to do that, I need things to like actually upload and not take seven years. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna give 5G internet a shot. <laughs> I did try to vlog myself setting it up the other day, which was a humbling experience to say the least. Plug one end of the power adapter into the gateway and the other end into a power outlet on your wall. Okay. I did eventually figure it out and I... <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have. It is 5.51 right now. It's currently saying it's gonna take 2 hours and 35 minutes to upload a 5 minute video. Okay, we're trying it. Oh, we're trying in 7 seconds now. Awesome. Oh, cool. I got tired of waiting so I made coffee and I'm having a... Biscotti. It's not helping. Cute. Nearly an hour has gone by and I'm at 14% out of 100. It shares the same speeds as my phone. Which, would like, you would think would be fine. But it's supposed to be lightning fast. But it's not even thundering. Like, the skies are clear. <laughs> well, that wasn't even funny. Sometimes I just, I just shouldn't speak. And the thing is, too, it's not even just that it's slow. It's also just unreliable. Like, it's having a hard time even, like, maintaining connection at all. <laughs> That's not really working for me. No, it's not. <sighs> like, I'm aging right now. It's just not doing what it says it's supposed to do. And I'm getting a little frustrated. And also, this is just me using it. Like, I live in a house with three other people. Do we really think that it's gonna be able to keep up? Let's, let's be a little bit serious. Four people trying to use... Has anybody tried this? Please tell me in the comments so I feel less alone. But for now, I'm giving up. Nothing to smile about in my life. So who else has ended up on that side of TikTok where people make their flavored waters every day and put like 10 pounds of syrup in flavor packets in them? Because I have. And every time I see it, I think, wow, that looks so disgusting. And I'm nothing if not a hater and also a easily influenced little loser who wants to try things. So I'm going to be trying it today, even though I know I'm going to absolutely hate it because I hate flavored water and fake sugar. This is no hate to the people who enjoy this. I'm a good person, but like, I just am not trusting it. So I have two things here. I have the Nerds Drink Mix and the Sonic Ocean Water. 
I also got vanilla syrup that I put in my coffee one time. Doing the ocean water first. I'm not gonna put the whole packet in. Not putting in the whole packet because I see people do this and they're like, oops, that was like the whole packet. Oh, whatever. I see people do it in their like 40 ounce Stanley cups and I don't have one of those because I'm a Hydro Flask girly and I, holy shit, that's gonna make my insides shrivel up and turn blue. I'm scared. <laughs> anyway, I refuse to put anything in my Hydro Flask that isn't straight up water because I feel like I'll never get the taste out. So unfortunately we're making it in my Lana Del Rey Surf Shop cup. Okay, <laughs> let's try it. Everyone say a prayer. It's kind of not bad. Wait, hold on. <laughs> it's kind of good. Wait, why is it kind of good? <laughs> okay, it's good in the way that like I can take three sips of it and then never want to touch it again. You know what I mean? It's just like way too sweet for me. Um, I prefer plain water. I'm a big water drinker. Uh, now I'm gonna do Nerds Cherry. I'm choosing, hello? Bruh. <laughs> oh, that's everywhere now. I'm choosing cherry because I absolutely hate cherry flavor, so I feel like this will be a more accurate representation. This is everywhere. It smells like cherry cough syrup. It tastes like cherry cough syrup. Wait, I brought vanilla. Let's put it in and just see. Just Let's just like see. It's too much. It's already too sweet. Guys, I'm feeling really negative today, sorry. I'm probably giving very negative vibes off, but I'm just not feeling real positive. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's a lot. It's not bad, I get it, but it's a lot. I like the ocean water better. Let's cleanse the palate. silly might do a seven super gross story time one thing about that channel and the silly little man who owned it who i absolutely wish i could like burns eyelashes and eyebrows off with a flamethrower he had a real knack for putting 13 year old girls at danger and in very uncomfortable situations one time he made us get in a 30 degree pool to uh get the mermaid shot for the sponsor uh and that was the first time i ever cussed i went in the bathroom after that shivering and i went fuck that very formative for me but that's not what we're talking about today today we're going to talk about the time that he hired an olympic gymnast to teach the seven supergirls gymnastics and i almost broke my neck <laughs> so we apparently had a sponsorship for this leotard company and they wanted to see us try gymnastics so somehow in this process an olympic gymnast was hired and a gym was rented out in orlando and this olympic gymnast sean johnson that poor poor woman was hired to teach us um gymnastics and i mean like basic basic gymnastics like ford rolls which i could not do which um it was like uh, it was like um it was uh. before i show you this clip i just need to make it clear number one i was extremely awkward number two i am five foot ten and cannot do gymnastics and number three i weighed 30 less pounds than i do now <laughs> and like humiliating myself aside i'm showing you this because it's just proof that i should not have been attempting any of this so we get to this point of the challenges where she wants us to do this weird little backflip thing where one person stands, the other person stands behind them and links their arms, and the one person leans forward and the person behind them is supposed to roll over their back and do like a backflip or like a, a backwards roll off of the person. I don't know what it's called. So I was partnered up with Nicole, dear Nicole. This is not her fault. I will never blame her for this. This is, we just should not have been doing this. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now, I was the person who was getting flipped over the back, which I'm not honestly sure why they would um, have me do that, considering uh, I couldn't do a forward roll like five minutes prior. But that's what they had me doing. We were not being supervised very well, and everyone was just going for it, trying it. And so we're watching everyone else do it, and Nicole and I are like, let's just try it. And then I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like it'll be fine and i'm like you're right you're right you're right you're right girl so we start <laughs> to try and do the trick and uh, i hadn't been taught how to do it so uh when you flip a person over on the back you're supposed to like tuck and roll but uh obviously i'm not very good at that so instead of tucking and rolling i just kind of <laughs> slid and then <laughs> right on the ground <laughs> 
just like that. Uh, and if you notice how the video cuts right before I hit the ground and then you don't see me for the rest of the video. Now you may be thinking, oh, she went to the doctor. That's why you don't see her. No, no, they wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me go to the doctor. I never went to the doctor and I fell pretty hard. So if I have brain damage, it's unbeknownst to me. <laughs> Just submitting an audition where I had to pretend like I was at the doctor's office and all it had me thinking about was how unrealistic my betrayal of me pretending to be at the doctor's office was. See, for me, the doctor's office is a very um, mentally exhausting experience. I am a haver of severe health anxiety, so every time I go to the doctor, it is like the world is ending and the tectonic plates have crashed into each other and I am screaming, crying, throwing up. It usually goes something like the nurse sits me down and is like, how are you today? And I'm like good and then she starts taking my blood pressure and my heart rate and she's like oh oh wow like these are really high are, are you okay do you have any medical conditions and i'm like and i'm like oh no i'm just really nervous and then she's like oh don't be nervous and then i'm like yeah let me just get rid of that let me just try that never thought of that and then um i like shit my pants until the doctor comes in and then the entire time until i'm out of the building until i'm out of the building without having to get blood work then i'm fine I can get piercings. Needles don't bother me. It's just the idea of something sucking the blood out of my body. Not into vampires. But anyway, in this audition, I was having the time of my life there. I was like, yeah. Well, I've just been having some chest pain. What can I say? It's hard being an actor. Sometimes you just have to take yourself to places you never thought you would go. My mom always said to me, fake it till you make it, baby. So I'm faking it. Not sure if I'm making it though. Yesterday I was watching my own TikToks because I do that all the time because I'm a little bit obsessed with myself. And I happened to look up at the search bar at the top of the screen, which is like what people search about you, I guess, or like a commonly searched thing about you. And mine said, Caitlin Wilkins, Brian Booth. So I have a couple questions regarding that statement. Do you guys think that I went to the Brian Booth because of my profile picture on here where I'm like, with the microphone? Don't look at that. I think I, I drooled on my shoulder in my sleep. That one? <laughs> So I think what might have happened to me is I am considered an influencer, but really I am just someone who got followers when they were really young and is now called an influencer. It probably shouldn't be because whenever I first got the followers, I was seemingly normal and my frontal lobe had not fully developed, but as my frontal lobe developed, I got more and more insane and now I'm starting therapy next week. I live in my parents' house in Texas and I have not stepped foot in LA in over four years except one time to go to Disneyland and that photo was not taken in the Brian photo booth. It was taken in a photo booth in a restaurant in New York City that I was dragged into because my friends are Swifties and they wanted to go for Taylor Swift Midnight's release weekend and it was also next to a bunch of toilets and it smelled like shit.